you saw the very best players the entire country has to offer, and you saw it throughout the course of the weekend. He's growing, he's improving at such a rapid rate. He, he's going to be a very good player. This guy's a cross between Sean Marion and Lamar Odom. He's a six foot eight lefty, a high level athlete, but also got a little bit of point forward skills in him as he can handle and pass the ball extremely well. At this point, they are simply the standard by which everyone else is judged in prep school basketball. He's considering the likes of Michigan, North Carolina, Kentucky, Kansas. Welcome back to the Upside Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Finkelstein. And on this week's episode, we've got a special group of visitors. New England's first family of basketball. We've got Michael Carter-Williams, Marcus Zigorowski, and Max Zigorowski, the three brothers who are all now playing at different spots. Guys, thanks so much for uh, for coming on tonight. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. So let's just start with a uh, with a brief update of where where everybody's at. I know Michael, you just finished your eighth season in the NBA, former NBA uh, Rookie of the Year. You've played with USA Basketball, just wrapped up uh, eighth eighth season with the Orlando Magic, and you're an unrestricted free agent now, or restricted free? Yeah, agent? no, I'm unrestricted now. Unrestricted, great. Marcus yep. just uh, going into his junior season. At Creighton, just uh, earlier today, was named a uh, preseason Naismith Award winner. Um, getting ready for a, a big season for the preseason number eleven ranked Creighton Blue Jays. Is that right, Marcus? Number eleven. Yeah, yeah, number eleven. Great, great. And then Max, we're getting ready for uh, junior season at Franklin Pierce, but with COVID and all that. We, you've got you've got a lot of eligibility. We're gonna be uh, you're gonna be making threes for a long, long time. <laughs> yep. All right, great. So, guys, I wanted to you know this is the first time we we've had like a full family on here, and I just think it's such a it's such a cool story. So, um, I want to start. You know, we'll start with Michael. Um, Michael, these guys. How old were these guys when you when you left Syracuse and and like? left the house and how has that impacted kind of your your collective basketball journey um i don't know i don't i don't i can't remember how old you guys were when when i left to go to uh that would have so, been 10 years ago right because you were yeah, two years yeah. in syracuse yeah. yep two I years was, in syracuse I was, I was in eighth grade yeah eighth grade so yeah i mean it was it was tough i think they were a little bit you know a little used to it though since you know i went to school in rhode island and i was right. you know gone for a little bit but um I, I don't know. It was it was an exciting time for the family. You know, yeah. I, I think it was, you know, they came to a bunch of games and got to see me play, you know, in, in a, you know, in a great arena in the Carrier Dome. So it was um it was a good time for us. Now, guys, this is a story uh, that I want to ask all of you about, because I'm sure it was uh, traumatic, for lack of a better word. But one of my. And obviously it's because I, I watched, you know, Michael growing up, but I just remember the NCAA tournament game right after you guys had the, the fire in your family and watching Michael do his thing in on national TV and playing so well under those circumstances. I remember like, you know, seeing, seeing the family in the background. Can you guys, were you guys all at that game? I mean, how did that, what did that night look like? Max, why don't we start? Why don't we start with you? We'll go around the horn. Max, you 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 go first. What'd that look like? Um, so Marcus, my dad, and I were all home. Uh, yep. My sister Macy and my mom were at, were actually at Michael's game, and we were watching Michael's game on TV. Um, we were in eighth grade. It was in like March, I think. Yeah. And um, I just remember seeing like a lot of smoke. Um, it was a crazy like time. I mean. Yeah. My dad called the police. It was just, it went downhill like real, like real quick. Like the chimney caught on fire. Um, just things were not looking good. And then all of a sudden the house was like in, in, in flames and um, it was freezing outside. So all of us were like just freezing. And then um, it was just not a good time. There's, we lost everything too. So God, no. it was just. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. So Michael, you're on the yeah. floor and didn't know this was happening. No, I didn't know. I like. I saw my. Uh, hold on, sorry. We got the next generation. We got the next hold generation on, of uh, of the family here, future WNBA <laughs> player. So, Marcus, we'll we'll go to you. So you're with Max at the house. 
And Sorry, guys. No, that's that's how it goes. I told you, I got a five year old who's about <laughs> to bust in here, so it's it's how it works. By the way, his name's Mac, my five year old. Okay, good good name. Yeah, yeah. Um. No. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know what happened. I saw it was towards the end of the game. It was actually it was like it was a ended up being a close game. It was like six five minutes left, and um. I was dribbling the ball up the court, and I saw my mom in the stands. I, like, looked over, and I saw her, like, bawling her eyes out. Mm. And I didn't know, like, what was going on. My grandfather was – he was a little old at the time, so I, you know, I thought something happened with him. Um, so I, I remember I called timeout, and I went over, and I was like, like – You stopped the on? game. Yeah, I stopped the game, called timeout, went over. I was like, what's going on? And um, Coach, Coach Hopkins, he told me that – my grandfather, he was like, he just had a bad day. He slipped and fell. Everything's fine, though. And I was like, okay. Um, and then after the game, they, they brought me over. And that's when my mom told me that the house burned down. And I was, it was, it was, I was kind of relieved almost because I, I really thought, like, something happened with my grandfather. And then when she told right. me the house burned down, I was, and she told me everybody was okay. So I was like, oh, man. But, um, yeah, that's how I found out. Did – I mean, you guys are a close family as it is, but when you go th through something like that, did that did that galvanize you guys even more? Did that bring you closer together, or is that just like a narrative? I'm trying to spin on it. No, I th I think so. I, I mean, I we, you are you're right in saying that we already are, you know, super close, and um, you know, I, I guess you could say, you know, it, it brought us closer. I I personally felt, you know, terrible for the rest of my family because. You know, most of my stuff's up in college, you know, most of my, you know, all my, you know, life is basically in college. I mean, I, I lost some stuff. I lost like all my accolades and trophies and things like that. But, yeah. um, you know, for every day, you know, type of things, I felt horrible that, you know, they lost that all of it. Right. Right. Marcus, um, anything that you've got to add to that to that memory or how it shaped you guys like collectively as a family? Yeah, you know, that was a that was a rough time, but you know, I think, you know, the way Michael played and how he how we, you know, kind of, you know, got us off the idea of that our house burned down and kind of helped us focus on how he's playing and and how good he played throughout that stretch in March Madness. I think that kind of brought us like closer together and you know, we kind of he kind of put the whole family on his back and you know, made sure we were okay and made sure, you know, that I've smiled like he, he gave us a reason to smile and, and laugh and you know, enjoy that time through his play in March Madness. But, you know, I think it definitely made us closer. You know, I mean, we're already really close, but, you know, we, we were all just happy. You know, no one got hurt and no one had any serious injuries after that. Right, right. Now, tell me, when when did you guys start playing together? So you guys are in middle school. Michael's already at, at boarding school at, at, at St. Andrews. You know, you're still in eighth grade. He goes away to Syracuse. He's in the NBA, and you guys are, are now at, at Tilton School. So, when did when did the game start, or have they gotten to? I assume they have. When they could start to be competitive. Um, I mean, we would always we'd we'd always. I mean, I don't. I can't. Remember, we haven't played like one on one on one in in a long time, but we've had games where like where we're we got a bunch of guys you know coming you know either in our backyard or to the court and we're playing either twos uh or threes and uh those games have been competitive for a little while now i mean we even even when they even when they were little you know we i would still have them play and obviously it wasn't as competitive back then but you know probably you know when they're when they're seniors you know junior seniors in high school that's when you you know that's when things started to you know turn up i would say right 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 uh, marcus when was the first time you realized you, you said you know what i can go buy this dude <laughs> <laughs> i still struggle with that to this day honestly it's hard <laughs> but um you know probably i'll probably say past few years maybe you know you know i'll, yeah, I'll get lucky that, one i'll yeah. get lucky a few times but you know uh, like I like most I think there was a day I, I can remember. I, there was a day where we, it wasn't one on one. It was it was a two on two game, and we were playing. And he got me with a. It was a good move. I can't remember. I I, I was. I think was, I don't remember what move it was, but it was a good move. And he got to the hoop and he he finished it. And then I was like, that was the moment where I was like, damn, like 
I actually got to I, I, I got to play like for real, like not for real, for real, because I was playing for real. But I was like, I yeah. got to really lock in because you gotta bring it. if so, then that's going to happen. Because I'm sure there's I mean, I know how proud you are of them. I'm sure, you know, and I want to ask you about how you push them and stuff like that. But there's got to be that big brother moment of like. Oh uh, hell no! You know, like that. that yeah. That's and same, yeah, and same thing with Max. I, I think you know, playing with him and like, like we're playing it t- again twos or threes, and you know, he's the game is six zero their team because he has four threes in a row. Oh you know yeah, I mean? we're, it's we're, like we're gonna get there. Yeah, we're gonna. Like, I didn't even start talking about shooting yet. <laughs> yeah, <we're> gonna... <laughs> so yeah, yeah. There's de- there's definitely moments where I'm like, okay, like. I can't just, you know, let my little brothers come in here and, and, and think it's sweet over here. <laughs> now, do you, do you let Macy play or, or no? Because she played four years at Bryant, right? Yeah, she, she she used to play. She used to play some. She used to play some for sure. She now, did, did mom and dad, dad ever get in or they were just like on the sidelines? He used to play. He used to get in a lot. Okay. Yeah, he used to get in a lot for sure. All right. Now, Zach, you are, are uh, not Zach, Max, my bad. Uh, you are very clearly the best shooter in the family. I'm going to assume that nobody's, nobody's going to dispute Slow that. Down, right? yo. <laughs> Slow down, yo. <laughs> so I, here's here's my question: Do you help them with their mechanics? Like, if do you get do you, you they ever you know they come to you and say like you know the ball's not dropping? What's what's the deal? I mean, how's that? Because it you know what's interesting? You guys are brothers and you all shoot the ball very very differently. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, it's not like you all have different games, I think. Um, and, and even just, you know, sometimes you see brothers and like, they'll just, they'll have similar mechanics or whatever, but you guys all, all have, you know, and I assume, you know, your dad and Zach was a big, a big part of like working with you guys on the shot. So it's just kind of, uh, you know, counterintuitive that, that the ball looks different coming off all three of your hands. So how did Max, how did that happen? And why can't those two shoot it? Like you can, I mean, like ever since like I was little, like I just always loved to shoot like deep threes and just like shots. Like I never like worked on my handle as much as like Marcus and my or, or Michael, and that's why like they're so good at that. But um, you were taller too, though, right? Yeah, I was also like a big, so like yeah. I would like like I was probably the tallest person like in my grade like every year. So I would always be like the big that can shoot. So um, like I just was always just shooting threes like in every game practice or just outside shooting. Um. But I never really gave them pointers because, like, Marcus can shoot and Michael can shoot. So, I mean, like, I don't really need to, like, give them feedback because they can already do that. So, so here, he I got to say it. Very, give very little, literal feedback. You know, if you say, say Max yeah. is going the wrong If it's short, get it up. If it's long, <laughs> yeah. too long. <laughs> so he's, he's – Yeah, it's he's not like – he's, like, like, he's, he's a literal critical thinker. Yeah. But, you know what, the like, and I, I'm going to turn this into a nerdy basketball point. Like, Max, I don't think, like, you don't miss left or right. You know what I mean? Like, your shot is extremely aligned. Maybe it's you know what I mean? Like, and by the way, guys, like, that's what you have to look forward to. So, you know, when you think about having kids, just shut it down. Okay? Not for a long time. <laughs> look at it. It's uh, So, I mean, but Max, you don't you don't miss to the left or, or the right. Ever. I mean, I, I mean, you rarely miss anyway. I remember a prep school game. I think you went seven for seven and it was just like target practice. Um, but it mm-hmm. just, uh, yeah, that that's an interest. You know, is there anything to that? You not missing to the left or the right? I mean, threes are just like my favorite part like, of the game. Like if I make threes, it makes me feel good. It makes, I don't know, like I'm just happy. I smile. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's weird. I don't, I don't know. Just threes and I have like a good, like, relationship i don't know i mean <laughs> i've always just shot threes <laughs> yeah, yeah good stuff all right so now here i gotta tell you this story and michael I'm, I'm curious your take on this so obviously the nba draft we're recording this on a thursday nba draft was yesterday i'm you know watching and i, I admittedly i don't watch guys as much in college as i do in high school because we're you know just moving on to the next group um so but i'm i'm watching RJ Hampton and I'm listening to all this stuff. Cause you know, he's working with uh, Mike Miller now and everybody's saying, yeah, yeah. Mike, Mike Miller's teaching him how to shoot. I'm like, what the hell do you mean? They're teaching him how to shoot. Like I watched them all in high school. Like the kid could shoot the ball. Like it's not like he was a, you know, 40% knockdown shooter. And it reminded me so much of what I heard about you earlier in your career, because there was this narrative of like, you know, Oh, MCW, you know, great defender, 
uh, not a great shooter, which is literally like the opposite of what I would have said when you were when you were in in high school. And I know a lot of that's rooted in your in your shoulder injury and how that how that tweaked things. Um, but you know, so I guess there's two questions here. One, there's kind of like the narratives that come up like early in your career because I'm you know like R.J. Hampton's always had like decent stro- decent stroke and he's got to polish it and rep it out. But it's like it's not like he's some like non shooter. And I just have visions of seeing you at, at St. Andrews, like making just an ultra fluid release, like, you know, step by I can remember that old gym at uh, uh, University of Rhode Island when you went had 37. I can just see you making like those step back jumpers over guys at the uh, NPSI. So can you talk to me about like what advice would you give, whether it's your brothers or somebody like RJ Hampton? who's somebody having gone through this yourself of like, Hey, I've always made shots. I've always had a good shooting touch. This narrative gets out there, or maybe it's something that, that, you know, there's a physical thing or, but I just curious your, your, your feedback on that, because I'm watching him the last couple of weeks and I'd think of you every time. Yeah. I would say, you know, obviously if there's nothing structural wrong, like I think with my case, I waited too long to fix what was wrong and it started to create bad habits with me. And, so if there's nothing structural wrong, and, and then also I think it caused me to lose confidence in my shot as well. Mm-hmm. But if there's nothing structural wrong and, you know, you, you know you, you shot it well in the past, I would say, you know, most of it probably has to do with confidence. You know, yeah. I think once you hear a bunch of voices, once you get a bunch of people trying to teach you different things, and you're mm-hmm. trying to listen to 20 people at once, and then you go in, you miss a couple of shots, now you're thinking about it. You know, I, I went through, the, you know, that whole – that whole thing of, you know, th- that whole narrative of oh, losing my confidence and, you know, I can't shoot. And I would say just build build the confidence and then just keep shooting the ball. Like, right. shoot it with confidence. Do do everything you can um, in the game. If you're open, knock it down. I'm coming. He's <laughs> so boss. I'm sorry. I'm my bad. No, no, no. You're good. My, the, uh, left. When she's in the WNBA, this podcast is going to be a hit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I would just say don't like keep keep shooting the ball with confidence when you're open. Knock it down. That's that's I think that's the biggest thing. And don't let too many people in your ear. Just you, if you know how to shoot the ball, you've shot it well in the past, you, you know, just stick to yourself and and, and 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 knock it down. You know, it's, it's real simple. You're open. Shoot it. Not pass it. Gotcha. All right, Marcus, we're going to we're going to go to you now. You have a let's say you have a, a rough game. Who is the harshest critic whose call are you not taking mom Himself. mom dad big brother twin brother or sister um that's a tough one you know they i don't i would, I'd probably say my my parents you know but i but i wouldn't say they're harsh i, I would just say they 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 shoot it to me straight you know, they yeah. let me know, you know, what I did wrong, but they also let me know like what I did good. You know, they, they, they keep a balance, you know, all my siblings just check on, check in on me and see, and see if I'm okay. And, cause I'm, cause I'm, I mean, you know, I'm real hard on myself, you know, when yeah. things don't go my way or I have a, uh, or, or, or if I have a rough game and, but you know, I probably say my parents, you know, those are the two people who I, you know, talk to every, like, I, you know, those are my parents, you know, you get yeah. it. So. I'll probably say them, you know, I, I, I can't choose one and I can't, I can't, you know, figure out who's who's more harsh, you know, if I have mm-hmm. a rough game. But, you know, they always keep a balance. And even when I have great games, they keep a balance of what I did wrong. You know, they never let me get too high or too low. So, and I think that's what, you know, helps me become the player I am is having, you know, a, a great system, support system to make sure that I'm not too high or too low. Now, you guys, how often – to like you guys are you guys interacting texting talking to each other on a daily basis like what's because i know you guys are michael are you in orlando still now or where are yeah, you yeah i'm still in orlando i'm so, still in orlando right now yeah we're in orlando omaha and and new hampshire right now so yeah uh, i mean you guys aren't even you know by like state law you guys aren't allowed to see each other about for a while right now yeah. so what's it like how often are you guys interacting, you know, on a, on a daily or weekly basis? What, what's that communication like? Uh, we, we text every day. Yeah. Face, we use FaceTime text, you know, we're always checking in on each other. Send, send us, I'll send them a funny video, uh, like on the internet or there. We'll talk about like, you know, UFC or boxing or, you know, my, 
Max will text me complaining about the school lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a little, different, now, than now it's little different than training table. Yeah, the training table is a little different. Well, now it's now it's mostly surrounded by the little one. Now it's always send sure, videos yeah. of her, and that's what that's basically what we talk about. You know, a and lot. she's and she's two now. Yeah, she's two now. Do you so, mind saying her name on the air, or you? Yeah, rather... it's Charlie. Yeah, her name's Charlie. Nice, yeah. beautiful. That's so. Do you guys now have you guys not gotten a chance to see Charlie because of as much because of COVID? That's got to be tough. Yeah, they went a while without seeing her. And then uh, just a little while ago, like about a month ago, um, I went home for like a month and, you know, they were able to come home. So they, they ended up seeing her. Nice, nice. Yeah. All right. So now, obviously, positionally, uh, there's kind of the most similarities between Marcus and, and Michael, you know, both being being point guards and stuff. Michael, how how much like you does Marcus play? Um. A good question. Um, I think we have different games, but we have similar tendencies. Um, I think we create a lot of the same, yeah, in terms of you know getting in the lane and finding open guys. Um, I think actually all, all three of us, I think we pass the ball really well. Um, mm, no doubt, yeah. You know, I think I think that's uh, one thing that you know all three of us have similarities in, in passing the ball and, and just making the, the simple play. You know, I think that's been taught you know to us that we don't have to hit the home run play. I don't think we've any of us ever been described as, you know, that guy. Um, but yeah, you know, I think between the two of us, I think um, defensively, I think we're, we're, we're close to, I think, I think we both dig in on the, uh, on the defensive end. Um, Did you, when I, you were his age? Cause that's, that's not, that it's admittedly not my recollection. So I'm curious, like, when did you embrace that mentality? Yeah. You know, I, I think, well, I, when I got to Syracuse, yeah. um, you know, we, we played, you know, we, we had a, when I, my freshman year, we had a bomb squad. So yep. our practices were unreal and uh, we played a lot of man in practice. So Interesting. I, it was a lot of, yeah, we played like half our practice was man, half our practice was zone because we need, we, we, we'd go against zone every day, right. go against man every night. So but games were all zone games were all zone. Yeah. But we, yep. when we prepared, you know, we, you know, our offensive sets were against man, like, you know, everything like that. So it was, you know, me and Dion versus Scoop and Brandon, you know, the whole yeah. year. And we, you know, we Dion had a chip Wader, on our Brandon shoulders. Fresh, yep. Yeah. We had a chip on our shoulders thought, you know, we should be the starters. And they were like, you know, we right. deserved to be. So, I mean, it was great, great competition. It was, you know, probably prepared me for the NBA. But I think that's when I was like, okay, like, you know, if I can, if I can learn to guard these guys, I can guard anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, Max, who is the uh, who's the best defender in the family? Um, probably Michael. He's okay. just so quick and he loves to get steals. Like as you can see, like every game he has like multiple steals, tips, blocks. So, um, but obviously Marcus is also a great defender. I'm just saying Michael's probably longer and bigger, so he has like an advantage. Yeah, because you and Michael are, are more similar uh, size-wise. I mean, you you yeah. guys must have, like, similar – I mean, I don't know what the wingspans are, but you're similar heights, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, like, probably a little bit taller. Yeah. You guys see. pick on pick on Marcus for being, like, the little one? Or you guys... Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that's Max. That, that's, I'm sorry, Max. Go ahead. Keep going. Um. Yeah, so – Probably Michael, like he probably has multiple steals, blocks, tips every game. Um, but no credit um, is taken away from Marcus because, you know, Marcus probably like gets steals every game too. Got you. All right. Now, this this is a question for, for Max and Marcus. Have you ever seen Michael get more angry at someone about your ranking than he did at me? <laughs> yes, at the rest. The At the rest, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. You know, this, so this is what happened for last year, you know, because that's going on and it's all in good fun because obviously, you know, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the whole yeah, family. That was, that was a little much. But I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm like, come on, man. I'm low man on this ESPN totem pole. I can't have the NBA rookie of the year come at me. I'm going to be fired by the end of the day here. Like, <laughs> not, pu so not publicly, but I did, give, I did give Mike Yagman, I gave him hell too. Ah, yeah, you know, right, uh, rightfully so, I'm sure. That's that's. Uh, but it's funny because I've said this several times. Like I always thought Max was 
the Division One player. Still think Max is Division One player. And the reason being is I have a saying. I said that college coaches don't – the stuff they look for in July is never the stuff they, they bitch about not having in January. You know what I mean? So, like, when it's going bad and they can't space the floor and their guys aren't reliable and they don't have guys who can make shots, that's not necessarily the stuff – they're looking for in, in the summer. And that's, I just, I just think shooting is like the most, you know, undervalued thing in the recruiting process, especially when a guy has proven that he can do it at that level. And, um, and then with Marcus, so this is, this is last year and the guys, you know, the, the uh, podcast is, is published by your view and Creighton was playing Providence. And they're like, hey, do you want to write an article about the the uh, the game or anything? And I was like, yes, I'd like to re-rank the New England uh, class of Mark's graduating class and just put it on the record so nobody gets upset at me from the family. So we put Mark so we put Marcus at number one and uh, and just and and rightfully so. I mean he he clearly earned it there, but I, I think the and I'm I'm making light of it now, but the uh, it was I remember thinking like in between I hope I don't get fired for this. It was like the cool, you know what? Like because I'm an old I'm the oldest of, of three siblings too, and I remember thinking you know what? If I were him, I'd be doing the exact same thing, uh, you know, kind of like the big brother watchdog thing. So the question to to Max and, and Marcus is like, what's that like? Like coming up and playing, you know, the, you know, the NBA rookie of the year is walking into peach jam or the NBA rookie of the year is on, you know, on Twitter, like having your back. And, and how does that impact the way people treat you, the way they interact with you? Um, and was that even something you were conscious of? Um, you know, obviously it was, it was awesome to have, you know, I felt like the coolest kid on the block, you know, having my older brother be such a star and, you know, college in the NBA, but, you know, I never looked at him different. You know, he was always my big brother. He was always, you know, we would, we would talk to each other the same, uh, argue the same, like, you know, what, whatever it was, it was always the same, but it definitely was different in social, you know, places where we, like Peach Jam, he would come in and my teammates would be like, you know, talking to him about the NBA and, you know, it was it was cool. You know, so obviously, you know, having him and just having him in my corner, all, you know, all the time throughout those tournaments. You know, me growing up in high school and going to college was great to have. You know, he's you know he kind of he's kind of giving us like a, a, a blueprint. He's he's always giving me advice, and so we you know without him, I wouldn't be where where I'm at today for sure. Gotcha. How about you, Max? Yeah, um, like pretty much same thing. Um, I mean, like people would ask us for to like to take pictures of him, and then um, like people would like want to try to like be friends with us, like but only because of him. Yeah, um, you got to learn to guard against that, I would imagine, right? Yeah, I mean, like I, I'm a, like I could tell like like if they were being fake or not. So, right. but um, but I've always like looked at Michael as like a role model. So like I never like looked at like I never looked as um, like if he's like a like a um. NBA player like I like I always saw him as my older brother like Marcus said never as like an NBA player so um that's about it yeah yeah that makes sense that makes sense Michael what what kind of advice are you giving these guys now um you know I, I mostly play the role of like you know they, they've been playing for a long time they know you know what they need to fix and what they need to do so you know I kind of play in in terms of basketball I kind of just you know, try to relax them. You know, they have a bad game, they're stressed. And I'm just like, you know, bad games happen. Like everyone has a bad game, like relax, regroup, you know, there's, a, there's another game to be played and, and, you know, kind of move on, you know, cause it's stressful, you know, they both have aspirations and dreams of, of what they want to do, you know, whether it's playing the NBA, playing professionally somewhere, like, you know, and I, and I think the hardest part is just dealing with all the, you know, I had a bad game, you know, who you know who was watching you know is this going to affect me you know going you know the next level or this or that you know what i mean and i yeah, think yeah. it's i think it's just like the game of basketball is you know everybody plays bad or you know and now we got and then off the court you know i just you know just try to give them you know advice you know in in life like i always have and, and things that i've been through and you know whether it's being a dad or you know going i don't know you know, doing whatever, you know, just in the, you know, taking my experiences and try to giving it to them. Whatever they're going through. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Marcus, are you the most intense of the three? Because that's that's my impression from the outside looking in. Is that fair, or is or is Max just hiding it? Is this like in terms of basketball, or like anything? yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like like watching you guys grow up. If someone mm-hmm. said like, "Hey, who got the most fiery?" or who you know, if they lose a game, who's getting the most angry? I would have said Marcus. Is that is that accurate, or is that? I think it's closer yeah. than people think. Yeah, it is close. It's closer than people think. I, I think I've gotten better. Yeah. Um, I think I've definitely gotten better with it. Um, but yeah, it, it it's close. It's close. Max, you're the, most, you're the most. You're the most zen. Like, like you'd be surprised. Like after we lose, <laughs> or or at Max say Max is a bad game. Max is like he, he like he's better at controlling his emotion. I think like uh, controlling emotion is probably the wrong term, but like. Stay hiding. Yeah, he's more hiding. He's like kind of like he doesn't want to. He doesn't want others to like, you know, give him attention yeah, yeah. or whatever. Me, I'm like, I'm I'm pissed. I'm. You can see it in my face. You can see it like how I'm talking to people. Like, so yeah. I think, I think he I think I'm better at it. Sleep, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And Michael, growing up, I remember him being really competitive. Like, and he's obviously gotten better at it. You know, but after yeah. like a bad loss or a bad game, but. Like I remember him, you know, after Syracuse in the car, like not talking to anybody after a bad game, and yeah, they definitely am, admit it for me. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, the, I, it's a lot closer. People think I think it's like honestly tied. Like, yeah. it, it probably just seems because my face or how how angry I get, but it's it's close. I I would also, and again, correct me if I'm wrong. This is just this has always been my impression that that was part of what made, you know, you guys. Uh, and I guess this is mostly mostly to Marcus in particular, like that drop, like when I look back, you know, I, I was joking about it, but when I re-rank, you know, those guys and I look back or just look at it and say, okay, look at the guys who came out of the New England, New England three years ago, who's the best NBA prospect now? And what's the disconnect? And I think the disconnect is just like your, or, or the, you know, the thing that I've got a better appreciation for now than maybe I didn't back then was just your drive uh, is really unique. I mean, I remember I remember your dad telling me a, a story and this was I think you were already at Creighton. He's like, he's like, Adam, I'm calling him at 11 o'clock at night, on Saturday night. He's in the gym. I'm like, I'm saying, buddy, you got to go to, you know, you got to go out, got to be social. And I, I can't get him out of the gym. But that's I mean, that's is that all three of you or is that is that? Just Mark, is that's your approach, or is that all three of you? You know, I think it's you know all three of us. You know, I think we all I think we all work really hard. I think we, you know, without that work ethic, we're not, we're not at where we like without our work without our work ethic. You know, each of us are not at where we're at right now. And you know, obviously, I think I take it to. A, 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 I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I I do force it at times. You know, I think I do a little bit too much. You know, I I'm just. It's just how I'm wired, you know. I've never been, you know, I've been overlooked my whole life, and you know, I've always. I said I'm, I was I'm, smart. Yeah, I, it's yeah. all good. It's all good. It's, <laughs> it's honestly, it's honestly helped me. You know, I appreciate you you doing that because it, it drove me, and you know, it, it kept me up at nights. I remember at prep school, I get up in the morning at five and go work out and stay late, and you know, I've, I, it's how I've always been. It's how I always be, and you know, my both my brothers are the same way. My sisters the same way. My mom is in her profession. She was the same way. My my dad was the same way. I, it's honestly, it kind of like I got it from my family. You know, it's just how mm-hmm. it's just how we are. How you guys are, and I I tell you what is, I start to do this more and more, and have like uh you know more more data to look back on in terms of like that's that's the biggest thing because like when you're in high school and you don't really you don't really know how each kid is, is wired as well as you would like just yet, you know, then you're, you're like, all right, the length, the athleticism, and then the longer the sample size gets, and you can just say, and the first thing an NBA team asks about, as long as they make sure there's no like red flags off the court is like, how much does he love basketball? You know, and that, that to me is like the, the biggest thing that I, I go back to with you is just, uh, and I think it's true for you, for like you said, for your whole family. Um, yeah, oh, yeah no, go. I was gonna say, and I, I do think I, I think that we all do work really hard. Um, I think Max works as hard, I think I work hard. Um, I sit there, my parents. Um, but I think it is a gift of Marx's, right? Like, I, I think that, like, for me to go work out at 11 o'clock at night is like I've done it, I've done it, right? But it's like it, it isn't like it isn't per se, you know, 
him. He like consistently, not like every night goes at eleven o'clock, but he, he it's not, it's not abnormal. Like, though. yeah, it's not abnormal for him to do yeah. to do that. You know, and I think right. I think that's um I think that's a you know a, a special gift of his, right? Like he's able to he has that drive to want to be like that, you know, you know, with basketball. He, he loves it like that. He, he he does it like that. Not to take away any, any anything away from the rest of us, but I think it's just had a, a a gift that he was you know blessed with to to do things like that. Now I know that. So again, I, I'm the oldest of three, and I know it, at some point, like you you stop looking at your younger siblings as your little brother and and little sister. Um, and so I know that, you know, in some ways you always do, but in some ways, like then they can give you good advice and they can be the ones to, to lean on, you know, for you to lean on. And that's, that, that becomes a, a different uh, animal. So I, I'm just, I'm curious. I want to ask this for, for all three of you guys and, and Max, I'll start with you. Is there, is there one, one special like moment or memory when you can be like, you know what? you know, uh, Marcus picked me up here or Michael picked me up here or, or Kelsey picked, uh, is it Kelsey? No, I said it wrong. Didn't I? Macy. Macy or Macy, Macy picked me up here. Or is it just like, is it just like the pack? You know what I mean? Like you guys are just always together like that. I think it's, we're always together. I mean, if I have a bad game and like I shoot bad, I think like I'll get a text from my whole family, like Marcus, Macy, Michael, my parents. I, like, I think we're all like really close and we're all like grouped. Um, like together so like like all of us will like say like the same thing to me like oh um you need to fix this and you'll do fine or just have more confidence and i think like all of us do like a great job of like picking each other up like if one of us has a bad game all of us will text that person like first thing without even like um like thinking um so i i definitely think that it's like a family like group thing instead of just one person doing it i, I think it's all of us doing it Gotcha. How about how about you, Mark? Is there any specific memories that, that stand out? Anything aside from obviously that that NCAA tournament game that, that Michael was in? Yeah, I mean, like in terms of them picking me up, I probably say when I hurt when I hurt my knee. You yeah. know, I, I was really down. You know, it was that was a that was a it was a rough day because you know we won the Big East regular season title and then so my emotions are so high and then I do I do this to, to my knee and I'm thinking like. Oh, I'm gonna miss the biggest term. I'm gonna miss, and I'm and, and this is when I'm playing really well. I'm doing. I'm. I'm like. I'm on. I'm on top of my game right now, and I'm. Yeah. You know. You know. Not like yeah. our, our team is. I. You know. People say we were the hardest team. You know, going into the tournament, and you got that look on your face that that I'm sure your brothers see all the time. But it's like you know, you see that look on his face, like oh, those other dudes are in trouble right now. Yeah. So when I hurt my knee, I remember just, you know, I was just like begging for help you know from my siblings and from my my parents and because i you know it was it was good because my parents were there when it happened so yeah you know so it was i was i was okay and you know i know we won so i was it was just it was tough because so many people were asking me if i'm gonna play like right, right it was right. just hectic and having having my brothers there and my sister there telling me marcus no matter what happens you know you'll be okay like and this is right when COVID is about to like come in too right yeah yeah. yeah. So, you know, if Kobe kind of took, took, not only took it away from me, you know, I, of course I still wanted my team to play, you know, I still wanted to support my team and, you know, see how far they gone. But, you know, having my brother and my, and my twin brother and my sister and my parents being able to, you know, make sure I'm okay, make sure, you know, it's just a little, little, you know, bump in the road. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be back. You have plenty it happened at the end of the year. You have plenty of time to get back for next season. And, you know, it was, it worked out, you know, perfect. And, you know, I just just thinking back on it, that, that that's what stood out. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, Max, sorry, go ahead. Well, also, like I had hip surgery in March, like the same mm -hmm. time where Marcus had his surgery. So both of us were like injured and in rehab like at the same time. So it was kind of funny because we're you guys do that like on purpose? <laughs> I mean you do it frequently. Yeah. <laughs> he had the same hip yeah, like he had the same hip surgery like um like two years ago, I think. So like we both had like the same hip problem and I had the surgery um this past March. I've had like a torn labrum for like four or five years. So I mean, that. ten NBA general managers just wrote that down. Never say that again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean I'm fine now, but honestly it was painful to play with and I think all of us like just knew like what um like what to do like in those times because yeah. I was in pain for years, but now I'm all better. But they definitely pushed me to 
like get through that pain like every day. And um, if it wasn't for them, I don't know if I would like made it that far. So you guys were home rehabbing separate injuries together at the same time. Yep, we were in like casts and um, wow, uh, crutches for like a couple weeks. We we're just in like bed rest. <laughs> wow, wow. Michael, has there been a a time when you know little brothers have been able to pick you up, or is that because if there hasn't been, there will? Is the is the sure, older brother? Sure. I can say yep. that. Yeah, no, I think when I got released from Houston, yeah, um, you know that was obviously you know a tough time in my you know career. Um, you know they 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 kind of picked me up, and I think it says something. You know, when when your own family, you know, they you can tell when they're trying to pick you up, you know, but, you know, the, the, you see the lost hope, even mm. though they're still trying to pick you up. And I think it says to something when you're like when your family actually believes something um, and, and you know, it forced me to, you know, kind of change the way I look at things and actually, you know, believe that, you know, I, I, I do belong in this league and, and I've done great things in this league and, you um, you know, I still have a chance to, you know, kind of flip the script on it, on everything. And, um, they, you know, they gave me great confidence, you know, in myself when, you know, that happened. So I think if I had to choose a time, it would definitely be then. And I, I don't know if this is something you can relate to, but I know I've felt this at various times. Like as a big brother, when, when you are conscious of what you're – of the when you're constantly conscious of the example you're setting – yeah, uh, absolutely. Sometimes they don't have to say anything. It's just it's just the fact that you know they're watching how you're handling that adversity that that is all the motivation you need. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, sure. On top of that, I, I remember something that stood out to me during that time was when, you know, obviously Michael got released and you know, I can you know, I put myself in his shoes and I'm I I would be I would be pissed off. I, like I wouldn't want to talk to anybody. I'd be like, man, this is like this is crazy and you know, Michael actually came up to one of my games. You know, he it was the only game he'd seen me live in college, and it was uh, versus Butler. And I remember he was at our practice, and he was, like, on our, it was on our floor, like, helping our guys out. And, you know, our mm -hmm. coaches were like, yeah, Michael, like, go in there. You know, you're, the, you're one of the best defenders in the NBA. You know, give him, give him all the insight, all the advice you can, you can give. And, you know, for someone to do something like that during a time like that, that right. gave me, like, gave me, like, a – Okay, like, shit, like that's an example for me to take of when adversity hits for me down the road, and how how can I react? And yeah, you know, that was a good time for me to so. see. So yeah, that was no huge, no doubt, no doubt. All right, I, I, I've uh, monopolized enough of your time, um, so I want to just ask the three of you before we go here. Where it's because Michael, I know you're a free agent, and, and I know there's different things going on. You know, Marcus, you know, uh, Creighton just shut down their season, so I don't want any of you guys to talk about it, whether it's free agency or COVID. Don't talk about anything you, you shouldn't, but just want to give, especially for the people from back home in New England who are listening, like the update of, of where each of you guys are individually. Because I know we've talked a lot about like the collective family, which is which has been great. It's just, I think is something that that a lot of people don't don't get to see if they're just watching one of you. But um, so just, you know, if we could wrap up with that, where you guys are in your individual careers and maybe like the long term goals too. you know, like uh, so, uh, Michael, why don't we why don't we start start with you? Yeah, right now um, I'm in Orlando. I'm a free agent. Um, I'm ready to go, man. I, I 28 years I'm, old now? I'm 20, uh, 29 now. Okay. 29. Um, I feel great. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of people are going to be shocked um, about how good, uh, you know, I, I'm going to play this year. Um, like I'm going in with a lot of confidence. We've been, you know, playing open run and, and playing one-on-ones. And um, I feel the, you know, the best I've, you know, ever felt. Um, I feel like I'm the, the best player I've ever been in my career. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy going into the season, you know, wherever I am and uh, right. I'm ready. Any, any sort of timetable or like fans at home when, when you might know where, where you're going to camp or anything soon. like that? Soon. I should know, you know, I should know in the next week, you gotcha. know, where I, where I'm going to be and, you know, free agency starts tomorrow. So, yeah. um, yeah, I should know pretty early. You know, a real quick sidebar here, because you mentioned when Marcus was telling the story about you jumping into practice, it made me think. So, you know, uh, eight years from now, when when you're when you hang them up, do you want to coach? Uh, I thought about it. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know, you know, what, 
you know, my life's going to look like then. But, you know, I, I thought about it. I, I definitely want to, um, I definitely want to do something, you know, I, yeah. in terms of, you know, coaching. I don't know at what level. Um, right. I don't know if I can see myself right now, you know, coaching college, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I think yeah. It's, it's just a just a mad game right now. And, right. right. Um, but, you know, high school, you know, I, I, you know, I would definitely, you know, want to do that. And, um, you know, I think I, I think I'm pretty good at it. So I don't know, maybe could, could be, could be uh, Max, we're gonna, we're gonna, somewhere. Yeah, for sure. Max, we're going for you. What, what three point record are we breaking this year at Franklin Pierce? How's that looking? <laughs> oh, it's looking real good. I mean, I actually went seven for seven for three today. Hey, no, I'm, I'm, I believe it. It's every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And our uh, scrimmage that we played today, it was like an inner squad scrimmage. Um, so I've been just trying to shoot lights out lately. Seven for uh, seven? Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, Max, when you make seven. your first, when you make your first seven, you, you got to take a few more. You know, you got to have a couple heat checks. The both that. of them, the both of them, they're, they're, they'll come to me with games like, "Yeah, I was seven for eight. I was like, I would never want to hear. Yeah, like, if I'm seven for eight, like, I'm at least going like eight for sixteen at that. Yeah, point. no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah. So, Max, and you guys are still, you guys are still on schedule to play. So far, so far, so good. You, we're hoping there's going to be a season. Yeah, it should start in late um, January, but it would only be like 10 games, I believe. And um, it's not even like a real like season because like it's just those 10 games. There's no playoffs. There's no tournament. Gotcha. It would just be that. And so you don't you don't lose your so you have after. I mean, this is going to be your junior year. You still have three years or four years of eligibility after this. Five. Three. Dang. <laughs> three years out. So uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there are options like i don't have to take it but I'll sure. buy it. could be dr zigarowski before it's all done yeah so i'll probably take it yeah, yeah no, no, that's, uh, that's a good thing right yeah why not if it's you know what this is i tell i tell kids this all the time like everybody you know for all people get worried about this like until you have to pay off student loans like you don't know the value of a scholarship you know, like that's that it's it's such a it's such a game changer that that I don't. Sure. I, yeah. All right, Marcus, what's uh? and I know. So, again, you had a heck of a day. You got nominated for preseason Naismith Award. You were uh, a week or so ago. You were nominated um, honorable mention All-American. Uh, Michael tweeted at all the all the voters and said honorable mention was unacceptable. Uh, <laughs> uh the um but what uh, i don't know i don't know what he's gonna do now he's not yeah. under the radar anymore yeah i, know, I mean I don't I, know, like i don't know i don't know what that's gonna be a gonna thing be. that's gonna be we're a thing harder. though right i mean we're you got the, now it is yeah you got the x on your back every game right yeah 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 i mean obviously it's different but i've always i've always seen myself as that like you know, within, like, internally, I have obviously externally no one out, like, just besides my family. But internally, of course, I'm going to believe that. And it's obviously different this time of year. And I'm going to have – we'll see what happens. But, you know, I don't like to get into in depth with expectations or anything. I just want to go out and play, do what I do, and have fun at the end of the day. And I'll live with the results. And you guys collectively as a team, you guys have a, you know, have a chance to do something – pretty special here with as a you know it looks like a really good group and obviously it's going to be a different component there with uh without Tyshawn Alexander I know he didn't he didn't get picked last night but signed with the Suns on a two-way I think I saw today right yep yeah so it's yeah. it's uh we're happy for him yeah no doubt no doubt well guys I um with everything that's going on free agency COVID uh I I can't thank you guys enough for doing this. This was a lot of fun. It's 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 been a lot of fun, not just to watch you individually, but the reason I wanted to do this is because I know just how close of a family you guys are, and I think that that's the story that's that's really cool uh, for people to hear is just you know hearing the stories about how you guys support each other at different stages. So um, I want to thank you, thank you for doing this, and um, we're gonna we're gonna get off so so Mike can go answer the door. Yeah, sorry about that. No, 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 it's all good. I appreciate it. Mike, seriously, I know I know free agency is starting, so thank you guys so much. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, you Adam. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. All right, guys. Good luck this year.
One more thank you to Michael Carter Williams, Marcus Zigorowski, and Max Zigorowski. It was a uh, first time we had a family affair here on the Upside Podcast, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Until next time, I'm your host, Adam Finkelstein. Thanks so much for listening.